Okay, today I'm going to do a review on my Mother's Day gift from my son and my daughter-in-law, which is a Taurus PT111 G2 Millennium. It's a nine millimeter. Um, I really, I really like this gun. There's several things about it that I'll go into later about shooting that um, take a little practice, but the gun itself is a very nice shape and weight and very well balanced is one of the things that I found out. Now, now I have already fired it, I'll tell you that, because of course the day I got it, I had to run it down to our range and uh, do a little shooting with it. So I was very excited. There's no better Mother's Day gift than a new gun. And it was so funny because when they went down to the the loco gun store well it's not real loco but it's as local as it gets to where we live um they saw these and they were actually on sale for such a ridiculously cheap price i mean i don't i i haven't checked them but i don't think that they could get much cheaper than what they were brand new in the box um and so my son was like i'm gonna buy more than one of these i'll give one to mom and i'll buy one for myself and and so, anyway, I, I was like, wow, what a nice gift. And then my daughter-in-law said to my son, are you sure mom doesn't already have one of those? And the guy at the, the salesman or owner at the gun store thought that was pretty funny. He was like, how many guns does your mom have that you would ask a question like that? And my son and daughter-in-law both laughed and kind of said, well, we don't know. Um, but, you know, she's a handgun instructor, so um, anyway, I, I just thought it was pretty funny. So this was presented to me, and first thing I did was load it, like I said, and ran it down to our range, which isn't too far from the house, um, as in foot-wise. And it took me a little bit of practice um, getting those first few shots off, um, actually probably the first magazine of rounds, I'll say. It took me a little practice, and I'll explain later why, and I'll actually take some footage of the range uh, at the range also. So let me give you the specifics on this. It's a nine millimeter, single and double action. Um, if there's a failure to feed, then it'll automatically switch. Um, and then it's a 12 plus one round. So 12 round magazine, one in the chamber, 13 rounds um, for the nine millimeter. The barrel length is um, 3.2 inches. Overall length is 6.2 inches. Overall height is 5.1 inch. Overall width is 1.2 inch, which is really pretty nice. Um, trigger pull is five to nine foot pounds, and it's got a pretty good trigger pull on it. Um, then the sights are adjustable three dot system. Really nice sights, if you'll see. Yeah, there you go. Um, and material slide is alloy steel barrel is stainless steel and the grip is polymer and I do want to show you with the grip it's got the textured grip and I really like that it, it gives you a lot of control over this weapon it's not just gonna slip out of your hand now some things that it has that I probably won't use are it's got a firing pin block Safety, uh, it's got a trigger safety, which you don't have a choice but to use that unless you have it removed. Um, it's got a manual safety, and that, that one's okay there. And it's got a loaded chamber in indicator, which obviously that you will use. That When it's loaded right up here, the loaded chamber indicator goes up, turns red, shows red. Um, here, the firing, right here is the firing pin lock. Then right here is the regular manual safety. I do not use the firing pin lock. I don't really use this safety um, because to me, my safety is to keep my finger off the trigger if I'm not meaning to shoot it. But, and here I will show you magazine, no magazine in, and we are actually empty. So, um, this trigger has a safety trigger a trigger safety right here. You'll see this extra little piece right here. And this, like the Smith & Wesson Bodyguard, and there's probably some others, but those that's the one I know for sure because I have a friend that has one, 
have, have this trigger safety, and there's probably some others, like I said. You have to be very smooth and continuous when you make the, when, when you go to pull the trigger, okay? You can't just start to pull it, and it won't do anything, and then you release it. Then you have to completely release it, let it reset. With this, when you get this far, then it's like all of a sudden it just doesn't, seem like it's going to fire and then you keep pulling keep pulling and seems like it's not doing anything you keep pulling and bam finally it it does fire so now after breaking it in a little bit that got a little bit easier and of course part of that was I got used to it and I and I became more comfortable with that trigger because um, I'm so used to my Springfield XD subcompact which has such a easy, smooth trigger pull, it is just, I mean, it really spoils you. So um, I'm not going to say that this gun is, isn't a good gun. Now, I'm not, gonna, I'm not saying that this isn't a good gun because it is a good gun. It is just different than my Springfield XT, as are every other gun. Every gun shoots differently, has its own pluses, minuses, so on and so forth. Like I said, the, the key to any, any weapon, be it a rifle, a handgun, a revolver, a semi-automatic, whatever it is, it's up to you to practice and, and become proficient with it. So would I say that because it has this trigger safety and a long trigger pull and a hard trigger pull that it's not a good gun? No. Several reasons why. One, it only took me one session at the range to get used to how this Two, trigger works. By the end of the second magazine, I was able to shoot out the center of the target with it. So that's a pretty good gun. I didn't have a single malfunction through 100 rounds. That's pretty good for a gun right out of the box because you know what they say, the first what? 200 rounds it's not even considered reliable yet so it has to be broken in and I didn't have any malfunctions um, so I'm used to this trigger pull now if you really want to you could take it and have the the trigger pull adjusted so it's not as as heavy a trigger pull as hard a trigger pull or you can also have this little piece here removed by a gunsmith because it's just a trigger safety and it's a I can show you Okay, so if you see right here, it's actually just another device, a trigger bar, that's placed over the trigger. So that can easily be removed. That's just depending if you want to take it to, you know, the blacksmith or if you have the capability of doing it yourself. I don't do stuff like that with my weapons, but I did actually first, when I first was shooting it, I actually considered it. And now I'm thinking, no, it was easy enough to get um, used to it, so... I'll just leave it, and I just won't use the other safety features now, on it. Like I said, one of the things I really like about this is the size and the weight. It's got enough weight to it that it doesn't feel like a toy gun. Um, I have a, a Kel-Tec 32, and I like that little gun. I've, I've had it for years and years, and I've shot it and, and fired it and fired it and fired it. So I like it, but sometimes when you're holding it, you really have to remind yourself that it, it is a real gun. So it's got really an excellent balance to it. When the magazine is in it, you can actually set it up and it's so well balanced that it won't tip over when you set it up like this on the magazine. So that's a pretty well balanced handgun there. Um, I like when you're aiming it. Like I said, it doesn't, it doesn't have a lot of weight in the front barrel that you have to constantly struggle to keep it up. Um, like I said, the biggest part is to get used to that trigger pull so that when you go to pull that trigger, you're not pulling left or right, depending on if you're right-handed or left-handed. And it is ambidextrous. Another thing I like about this is how easy the field stripping is. Now, if you follow the directions in the, um, the handgun manual, the instruction manual, it's kind of misleading because it says to pull this back an eighth of an inch and then use the um, the rail release there and it doesn't really quite work like that. But um, we'll show you. It doesn't tell you that you need to pull the trigger 
after you've put it in place and then release it and pull the trigger again. So it, it doesn't mention that, but you do need to do that. And I'll do a complete separate um, video on the field stripping of it. But it is, it's very, very simple. It's basically, you do that in one smooth action off it. And I mean, it literally just be careful. Make sure you have it over a table or something because it will literally just go sliding off the front. And then you can break it down like everything, like all other weapons. And then when it goes to put it back together, you just quickly slide it all the way back. And that's the, that's the key. When you put it on, slide it all the way back, let it click, pull the trigger, and it's set. Now, one of the things I like about this gun also is it's a little slimmer. My, my Springfield XD has a double stack magazine. So one of the magazines I think holds 15 and then I've got one that does 17 or maybe it's 13 and 17. Can't remember right now, but it's got a double stack magazine. So it's a little bit thicker than this. So they're again, a little harder to conceal, but now in Texas that we can open carry in the majority of places, there are a few places that put up, um, oh, what are the 3007 signs for no open carry, but the majority of the places here uh, around where we live have not. So that is an advantage too. I can carry on my waistband now. Um, I don't necessarily open, open carry. I might do outside the waistband, but I usually have a shirt or something over it. So I'm not totally exposed, but again, um, it is a ninth nice width at just 1.2 inches. So that's pretty nice. And again, I like the weight of it. It is a little bit lighter than my XD also. Um, but when it, come, when it comes down to it right now at this point, and there is prejudice involved here, would I take this weapon, the Taurus PT-111G2 over my Springfield XD? No, not at this point. The Springfield XD is super fast breakdown. This one's fast breakdown too. Like I said, a little bit, a little tiny extra step in there. Um, the Springfield XD has an excellent, excellent trigger pull, excellent accuracy. I just, okay, again, I'm prejudiced against it. It's my go-to carry gun. So yes, I really, really like it and I am prejudiced. So it would take a lot, a really, really special, a lot of gun to replace my Frank Springfield XD. But um, again, being used to the trigger will make all the difference with this handgun, and I'm just gonna keep practicing with it, but I do really, really like it. So when I get it to the range, I'll show you a little bit of what I'm talking about. Okay, 
And there you have it. Oops, where's it at? There you have it. The Millennium G2. And uh, not the best shooting in the world, but not the worst either. Um, at least I hit the target. And, <laughs> and if you notice, I also did not take any um, really aimed shots. Uh, I just, I try to shoot as if I was needing to shoot. And so I try not to take too long in between shots, but at the same time, I'm not like doing, you know, quick draw McGraw either. Okay, so um, the gun itself, it's a good gun. Take some practice with the trigger. And as you see, my trigger pull is still not quite smooth. Um, also, I did not use a, a good ammo. I used a cheap aluminum ammo. Um, can't even remember what the brand is now. But anyway, I'll get you the brand when I get back up from the range. And there you have it. The Taurus PT-111 Millennium G2. $199 gun will definitely save your skin if you know how to use it.